Hi everyone! So today I'm going to be posting the real-time color mixing demonstration, a half hour long of just non-stop painting and color mixing and then me kind of ranting while I'm painting. And this is for my painting Haven. I've never ever time-lapsed this painting for YouTube. I just wanted to focus on the piece and sometimes filming a painting takes a bit of the process away. However, I did make a behind the scenes video, which is arguably also taking away from the painting somehow. But I also wanted to show you guys uh, how my process is. And these kinds of videos I've been posting on my website for the past year. And recently I have been switching over to Patreon. So this is part one of the video. I'm just giving it away as kind of a freebie. And this is a realistic painting. Um, lately I've been dabbling in surrealism. So just to give you a little precursor to, to the reference, this was actually referenced in a video. So I filmed an underwater video uh, with my phone <laughs> and an underwater case and I selected a number of stills like I paused the video and I chose a few of the different video stills that I liked and wanted to paint and I chose my favorite out of that one the one where I really really liked how the water flowed and the light sort of worked and I selected that one and I used that painting as or that photo as the reference oh also I also edited it in Photoshop, so I changed a few things about it, mostly the colors, just to get it to be what I like. Um, and that's basically how I got to my reference. I threw on a grid to like really save me some time as far as painting the shapes and the positioning of everything. Because the face is angled, and that's kind of a, a weird thing to paint sometimes visually, uh, as far as anchoring your eyes and like being able to, you know, really put it in the right place. I don't know how to describe that. Also, I in the video, I kept pronouncing Thalo as Pathalo, and I know that's not how you say it, and I recently learned that, but you know, this whole art thing is a learning process for me, and pronouncing the colors correctly is also part of the learning process. So, you know, just ignore every single time I say Pathalo because I know it's Thalo. So, I think at one point I also used to call it Pathalo. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. Anyways, this is part one, so it is going to end very jacked up, like you'll see where the painting ends at the end of this video, and it's going to look like a mess, and I'm pretty sure I state that in the video, but part two is going to be available on my Patreon page. I hope you guys enjoy, and without further ado, I apologize for this long intro, let's get into the painting. So this is the image I'm going to be painting onto this canvas, I already have a grid drawn on. The canvas is 16 by 12 and I started up a palette here. We have Pathalo Blue, Radiant Turquoise, Yellow Ochre, Radiant Magenta, Flesh Tint, Titanium White there and also in the center so that I can mix different colors in with those. Some Naples Yellow Hue, Cadmium Lemon, Cadmium Red Light, Alizarin Crimson, Burnt Sienna, Portland Gray Deep. I accidentally picked that one, but we'll see what happens. <laughs> um, some Haynes Gray Chromium Oxide Green, Pathalo Emerald, and Pathalo Green. And we'll see if I end up using all of these or have to add even more. To create the dark parts of the um, shadows and the hair that's all swayed in the water. I'm going to be using all the green tones and some titanium white with Payne's gray. If you zoom in on that, you can see there's different shades of green. So that's why I picked both uh, Pathalo Emerald and green. Because that'll probably give us the effect we want. So I take some chromium oxide green with titanium white. And then I take some Pathalo Emerald, which is a really, really bright green and it's also a transparent color so you, you're gonna need some titanium white with that otherwise it's just not gonna be able to give you a solid dark color um, then some pathalo green which is darker than the emerald and then I'm also taking Payne's gray I don't like to use black paint too often it's a little bit too pigmented for me so I'm taking Payne's Gray and Pathalo Green. And then I have a mixture of Gal Kid with Gamzol here as the medium and just some plain Gamzol over there. And I'm just going to start using this uh, dark greenish uh, 
Payne's gray color to create the shadows. Gotta move that down, okay. Can't really tell that well on camera, but it certainly it does have a green tint to it. And then I used some of the um, Pathalo Emerald and Titanium White. It's just a little bit lighter for the eyebrows and the areas around the face and towards the water. And eyelashes, because those have green in them as well. So I brought in some Pathalo Blue, and uh, we're going to use that color to paint the tops of the water where it's distorted there is a little bit of blue tint in that and I have friends here hi <laughs> I'm bringing some phthalo green in there as well and we'll bring that color in later but right now I'm just going to paint the eyebrows <laughs> and this eyebrow here has a lot more browns because it's closer to the light. Um, the shadowy parts of this reference tend to have more green in them, but even though there is still some green, we're going to use a little bit more um, raw umber and burnt sienna eventually, but right now I'm just getting down the basic shapes so that I know where the corrections need to be made later on. Then I'm going to use that lighter green with the same color I already had on my brush. I'm not too concerned with it polluting the color. I'm just establishing, again, basic shapes. Brought in some of that blue I created earlier with titanium white. taking the same color and I'm using it for the uh, sort of like mid-tone between the hair and the skin tones um, in order for it to look natural it's obviously not plastered you know the dark parts and then it goes straight to the skin tone it gradually gets lighter and lighter into the light so that mid-tone is going to have like a in-between color and it's a little bit bluish green it's like a dark bluish green so there's some Pathalo Emerald and a little bit of Pathalo Blue and some titanium white mixed in there. And I'm just using this color along the side of the face. If that makes any sense. Um, and also bringing it into the top because the water reflection is going to be all up here and it's going to again reflect those same colors in the face but it's going to twist and distort them and that will give the illusion of 
it being underwater. I'm also going to use that color for a little bit underneath or just a little bit um, at the eyelashes just to fade them a little bit. The computer keeps on shutting off. I have to... Anyway. <laughs> so I'm just using that color there. I think the brow might have ended up being a little bit too long. Uh, but that's okay. We're going to fix it later. Um, not too worried about that. Once we get the basic shapes down and I ditch the grid, like I'll be able to see what needs to be fixed and adjusted. But for now, I'm just laying down the basic shapes. You guys are starting to get a little bit more familiar with my process, I'm assuming. Like as you watch these videos, you kind of see the consistencies in my technique, like the grid and laying down the basic shapes, which I'm always talking about. So I'm taking some Payne's Gray and some Pathalo Green. Looks like we're running low on those colors. I'm gonna have to add some more to the palette at some point. So I'm bringing that color in here at the bottom and as you can see these dark parts, the, the hair, that's what I'm painting right now. I'm a little bit sporadic with what I choose to paint and where I put certain uh, Colors. I mean, I tend to do uh, the darks first, and then do the highlights, and then mid-tones. Um, but again, it, it all depends. It's not always done that way. It's just like what I'm feeling like painting. Because if I follow a, st a system, if I make myself paint the darks first when I feel like painting the highlights first, then I'm not going to be too happy. I like to just be very intuitive with it and sort of let it come together on its own. Alright, this looks like it needs a little bit more Pathalo Blue. I stopped calling it Pathalo. <laughs> I had that dilemma in my last video um, for my website members, for you wonderful, wonderful subscribers. Um, if you watched that video. I was having a bit of a dilemma. I didn't know if I need to call it Pathalo or Pathalo, but I kind of like the way Pathalo sounds more, so that's what I'm going to stick to. Okay, so I added some Payne's Gray and Pathalo Emerald and Pathalo Green, just all, <laughs> all the greens, except for that chromium oxide. Um, in fact, I don't think I'm going to need more of that color. It's a little bit more earthy and, and uh, not as bright, whereas the colors in this are super bright. But we'll see, it might actually have a place like somewhere in this area, uh, mix it in with some yellow ochre, I don't know. We will figure it out along the way. But that looks to be a more accurate dark hair color, flowy water hair. <laughs> so I'm just bringing that in. And uh, the more medium you add, it will get a little bit more transparent because we are working with uh, transparent colors, the pathalos are at least. So um, again, this is layer one, so this will get covered up more. So don't panic if uh, you don't have the canvas covered completely. It's not that important for the first few layers. Then there's like that part where there's still water in the background, so I'm just going to paint that dark area near the eye. It's very easy to tell where you should put certain colors if you're using a grid. So that's why I'm a very big grid advocate. It just helps you see things a little bit more accurately. I'm sure I could freehand this, and I have freehanded water before, like that painting right there was all freehand, no grid. I mean, technically using a grid is still freehand. You just get a little bit more of uh, how do you call it? I mean, you're not tracing, you're putting down all the shapes all together, but you have like a mathematical process to do it. Whereas over there, I was just winging it out of nowhere. So there's that. <laughs> Starting to look a little bit more like a face, yes? Kind of like Voldemort, but you know, it's okay. We will fix that at some point. <laughs> I 
I also really like this canvas texture. I'm pretty sure it's linen, not cotton, because it's very smooth, so there's not as, as many little cube thingies that canvas texture tends to have. You know what I mean? <laughs> like the stitches, if it's a cotton canvas, they normally tend to be really thick and visible. And you can only see it when you um, point it towards the light, but overall it's very smooth. It's, it's much more fun to paint on this kind of texture. So I'm going to continue doing that and then place the shadows where they need to be and then move on to some of the midtones or highlights, whichever. So I decided to add to my palette some Thalo Emerald and I'm going to bring in a bit of yellow ochre, I think, for some of this um, skin area and then like right here as well, there's, there's some yellowish tints to it. So yeah, brought in some Pithalo Emerald, which wasn't on my palette before when I initially explained all the colors I had. So that came later. And that is going to go right into these areas where it's like a little bit lighter. And again, not perfectly blended in. Um, I'm just going to have that lighter green there because that's what I'm seeing in my reference. It's a, it's a lighter green. There's also some bit of bit of a blue tint there, so I'm adding a bit of Pithalo blue. Add some more emerald green. And yep, yeah, that's what we're working with. Now I'm going to add some more titanium white and with that color bringing in some yellow ochre for the slightly fleshier colors that we have here at the bottom. Pretty sure it's not 100% accurate, but y'all already know I don't do the whole 100% accuracy thing. So just felt like throwing that out there for the thousandth time, if not more. <laughs> Maybe I should omit the word y'all from my vocabulary, but uh, ever since being back in the South, can't help it. I don't know if Florida really counts as the South because it's like, it's South in America. It's like the most, one of the most Southern states, but it's also filled with people from all other states. Whereas in like North Carolina and Georgia, I'm pretty sure you have like the whole American pride thing going on, which I don't have. I'm not American. I mean, I am because I was raised here, but... I'm Ukrainian, so uh, a lot of my culture was still maintained, you know. In in a lot of ways, I'm still in that as in that mindset. But yep, okay. So it looks to be like there's a little bit more of like a pink uh, or purple tint towards this part of the skin. All right, software update. I know I need it. So I'm bringing in some radiant magenta with. Titanium white, and I'm just adding that to that emerald green yellow ochre titanium white mixture. And that's going underneath the jaw right up there. Probably blend that in a little bit more. Okay. Then, taking that same color, I'm going to take some yellow ochre. And uh, it's already got green on my brush, so I'm just going to bring that color in right along here for, for this part right there. Alright, and obviously there's like more green and a little bit more of a variety, uh, like if you zoom in, which I'm going to do. Like if you zoom in, you can see it's not just this yellow ochre color, in fact it doesn't even look accurate. But that's okay, there's like some kind of purple in here, maybe a bit of burnt sienna right down there, and then more greens and a little bit more purple, so we'll work with it. Just trying to get this canvas covered for now. Alright, so for the skin mid-tone, like shadowy part where the light doesn't hit the skin, um, 
I'm using some of that flesh tone and I got a little bit of burnt sienna and I also brought in some like green mixture with yellow ochre so I think that's, that's about what I'm looking for and so I already brought some of that on there actually I think I need some more oh yeah okay I brought in some alizarin crimson as well and this is going for like these uh, warmer like Alright, this looks really deformed right now. I've really got to fix the mouth. It's just a hot mess right now. But I'm using some titanium white with a bit of cadmium yellow light. And these are the highlights on the face here. Um, and a little bit up here as well. And then up here where we have more bright water um, distortion and reflection. There's also some light kind of like dancing on the forehead so we're gonna do our best to make that look like what it's supposed to um, but yeah currently I'm just painting these highlights here and the face needs a little bit more dimension obviously it's very flat looking so we're gonna fix that this part of the nose is way too dark this is not what we need but it's cool it's whatever well we'll get to it <laughs> so I'm periodically, ooh, there's some green that got in there by accident, that was not supposed to happen. Um, I'm periodically using this Gal Kid Gamzol mixture to mix in with my paint, uh, and that's making it flow much better. And uh, I'm going to take a break here in a second, because my mom's supposed to get here any, any minute she's visiting me today um, to see the new place. She hasn't seen it yet, so... Yay! By the way, if you guys are wondering where I'm working, I'll show you guys my work area. That's what it looks like right now. And I'm going to... There's a lot more <laughs> wall space. And basically, the plan is to just overdose the wall with art. Uh, but right now, this is like the, the setup that I have. Um, I have so much more room to work, and I'm really excited. So... Yeah, this is actually the largest uh, space that I've had so far. Um, even though I do also sleep in this room, this is like the largest studio that I've had. I have the most uh, working space out of all my other studios. So I'm really excited to see what this new space, ha um, what kind of art it inspires me to make. Um, yeah. It's exciting. I feel like I move so much. Alright, so I just mixed in some Naples yellow hue with cadmium lemon and titanium white. And um, I think I'm going to add some flesh tint to that and some radiant magenta. This is going to be for these areas. Here, let's zoom in on that if you can see those colors a little better. Um, yeah. I'm doing that thing where I forget to breathe again or I'm just talking so fast and saying so much that like I run out of breath. <laughs> uh, yeah. That's my life. Right. So yeah, this like um, little light swirl up at the top here. It's got some radiant magenta flowing through it. Um, bit of a peachy tone because all, it's all these skin tones that are just distorted and reflected so I'm gonna have to fix those up a little um, speaking of we're gonna take that same color add some more titanium white to it and some medium I'm just gonna bring it into the face just to make it look more alive because it's very flat right now and that's not what I need Needs to be warmer. It had a bit more of a gray uh, tone to it, probably because there was so much green in that color that I mixed initially for the face, but it's not exactly what we need, so paint over that weird color that ended up in the nose for whatever reason, because I'm just so careless. There's a bit more of like a lighter green up in this area that fades from the light, the highlight to the shadows. So we're going to do that in a second. But 
So far I'm just trying to make the face look a little bit more real because it looks blasted right now. Okay, this mouth <laughs> looks so messed up. Oh my god. Alright, so the colors for the lips that I used were Alizarin Crimson Cadmium Red Light, and I think I might have had a teeny bit of burnt sienna in there, and Titanium White. So I'm going to just mix those colors again, and uh, try to fix this hot mess I have going on. <laughs> Like, what did I just do there? I, seriously? This is a struggle I face. Um, okay. As long as you create, like, that shadow line where the lips uh, meet, that's the key to making it look not deformed. But right now, it's just such a mess because you can't tell, like, where <laughs> anything is, or at least I can't. So, um, there's a whole shadowy part, like, right here, and then that line, you can see. So, let's zoom in on that and see what colors we need to put there. Um, it's looking like a grayish, a grayish with some green here at the edge. So, actually, this color right here, it's not really that gray, but it's like a faded alizarin crimson. I think that's actually close to what I need so let's give it a go oh nope it's too light well actually this part of the mouth is, mouth is too dark so I'm just going to add more alizarin crimson and some Payne's gray ooh that is not what we need all right more alizarin crimson burnt sienna um, and again probably gonna fix that later but I just need to create this line here so that it can stop looking like a deformed mouth to me. <laughs> um, yeah. It is bothering me. Can't let it do that. This part of the lips is also way too dark, but whatever, we're gonna fix it. Chill out, calm down. And then towards the shadowy part of the mouth um, where the light doesn't hit it, it's it's got some green in it, so I just added a little bit of Cthulhu Emerald. And that like curves here. You'd think after painting myself as a reference so many times, I'd already know what my mouth looks like. But... All right, so it has been few days I did a little bit more work on the painting it looks a, a lot more complete now because I've totally covered the canvas and I added some little subtle transitional colors between the shadows and light in the face like these greens here in the shadows um, again in the brow and just this this image has all kinds of colors and lots of green in it um, especially in the skin tones I like the fact that it's also this like really bright green. Did a lot more work on the lips. Um, this little shadowy part had some alizarin crimson, burnt sienna, um, quinacridone magenta, and some dioxazine purple. So that is uh, what that shadow is right there. This area had some cadmium red light, titanium white, a little bit of alizarin crimson. Um, yeah. Also some Hansa yellow light. And uh, I've just been building up the tones here. This obviously needs a lot more work up here. You can still see a very faint line from where the grid is. Up close you can really see it. But I'm just gonna give you guys like a close up of the brush strokes. You can see they're very um, loose and painty, maybe a little messy if you wanna call it that. 
So I'm just gonna be smoothing that out. Obviously the lips need a lot more work. Still kind of a mess. Um, <laughs> but again, I'm not trying to go for like crisp accuracy from far away. It looks a lot more like what I need it to, but still needs a lot of work, especially this nose. Like my goodness, where are the, no <laughs> what is going on here? We need to fix that. That is not okay. So yeah, let's get to it. So yeah, it ended like really jacked up, but you know, it gets better. The, the final painting is obviously much better once the layers start to progress. So yeah, part two is gonna be on my Patreon page. You are amazing if you made it to the end of this video. I salute you and want to give you a hug, internet hug. Yes, here we are. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.